Welcome back everybody. Now we've come to the final series, final video of our series, where we're gonna put everything together. You've learned a lot about what habitat feature birds cue into in the forest, why they're important, which birds use what part of the forest. And now we're gonna talk to Amanda about how do you take that information and put it together into a management plan. So Amanda, can you tell us a little bit about how that would happen? I'd be happy to do that, Sally. So a really good place to start is with the Forestry for Maine Birds guidebook. This uh, nice thick book here is a guidebook for foresters managing woodlots with birds in mind. But if you're a really active landowner, you also might want to get your hands on a copy of it because there's some really great information here about all the things that we've talked about today. The first thing I'd like to bring your attention to in terms of management plans is this, is this handy trail map. I would do air quotes, but I can't right now. Um, handy trail map, um, which is on page 76 and 77 on managing forests with birds in mind. So how do you get from a handy habitat assessment to a forest management plan? I'll read you the basic steps and uh, we'll talk through it a little bit. First, we want to know for you as a landowner, what are your goals and objectives? So that's where it starts. What do you care about on your land? Next, we want to assess the current habitat conditions. And again, your handy habitat assessment is a good place to start. Next, we want to think about what are the light, what are the goals and objectives that you have in light of what you actually have going on in the woods. And then we would talk about silvicultural systems that can help uh, that can help in you achieve your goals on your land. Silviculture is the art and science of forest management. There's a little bit of art and a little bit of science, and when you put it together, you can have forest bird habitat that is enhanced by timber harvesting and special treatments that happen on the ground. So silvicultural systems. And that goes hand in hand with the forest management plans. So again, we start with landowner goals and objectives, and then we have to understand what's going on on the ground. What does it mean for forest bird habitat? Then we can make some goals and decisions and decide what silvicultural systems will help us achieve those goals. And that goes hand in hand with forest management planning. So to give you a little more detail on how we get from our handy habitat assessment um, to a forest management plan, all these things that we were talking about earlier with overstory, midstory, understory, live features, not live features, those are similar to what a forester would be, uh, would be assessing in a timber inventory. Um, and in fact, all those handy assessments are paired with science. So it, in, in the Forestry for Maine Birds Forester's Guidebook and also online at the Maine Audubon website, you can find a copy of the data form that pairs this. So just as a quick example, in terms of overstory, instead of just thinking, hmm, is there a lot, some, or not much, then we'd give you, uh, we'd give you a little bit more detail about what are the tree species that are there. Um, or is it more of a hardwood or softwood mix? Where's the canopy height? Um, and then take notes about the canopy gaps and other features. There's some really good uh, habitat assessment tools and, and a way to capture the data um, on this form. And once you run your handy habitat assessment or your detailed data assessment a number of times, it goes really quickly. So it's something as a forester that you can add on to um, pretty easily to what you're already doing, the, the information you're already, already collecting in each stand. Thanks again to Amanda for setting the stage for what's involved in putting together a management plan. And now we're going to hear from two experts on the topic who are familiar with working with landowners on developing those management plans. First, we're going to hear from Andy Schultz with the Maine Forest Service, who is a land, landowner outreach forester. And he also works closely with district foresters for the Maine Forest Service. So Andy, can you please tell us what do you do and what do district foresters do and how do you help landowners develop management plans for their woods? Okay. Well, uh, Sally, as you mentioned, I'm, uh, my name's Andy Schultz. I'm the landowner, the landowner outreach forester for the Maine Forest Service. And that's a statewide position. I mostly talk to folks on the phone or by email about their woodlots and uh, try to get them on the path to help them take their next step which very often may be getting that forest management plan done. Uh, in that case, we usually refer to a group of consulting foresters and more about that in a second. But I do want to mention one more tool here, and that's this book, which is The Forest Trees of Maine. Essentially, um, if you want to know your species, your tree species, and more about where to find them. And of course, that is key to 
uh, determining habitat as well. Uh, that book is available from the Maine Forest Service or by calling your local district forester. So we have 10 district foresters here in the state of Maine uh, covering the entire state. You can look up your district forester by going to maineforestservice.gov. Uh, there's a find your district forester page uh, or you can email to forestinfo at maine.gov and just let people know where you are or where your woodlot is and uh, people like me will respond and tell you who your district forester is. District foresters can come out, they can walk with you, answer questions, um, make broad suggestions and recommendations. They will not perform the function of writing a forest management plan or overseeing a timber harvest. Again, as I mentioned for that, they're going to refer you to um, a private consulting forester. We do keep a list of those on our website. We refer to them as stewardship foresters and they're there to provide those services to uh, private landowners, including um, getting your woodlot uh, in shape for different wildlife habitat and different species. We now have a former district forester and currently a private consulting forester with us to talk a little bit about the role that private consulting foresters can play and how they can help you manage your woodlot for the values that you care about. Thank you. Thanks, for Paul Larrabee. Thank you, Paul Larrabee, uh, consulting forester. Um, my main uh, job is to meet with landowners and really try to get to understand their objectives for their land. Um, that often involves walks in the woods, uh, long conversations, usually with coffee or tea, usually, um, about what their main goals are for their land. Um, and that varies, um, but the one uniform theme is um, you know, recreation, wildlife, aesthetics, and timber management, and also um, the next generation, what's gonna happen to the land um, uh, for the next generation. Um, so after we discuss all of these topics, and usually it's in great detail, um, I work to develop a, a long-term plan for that land to meet all of those objectives. Um, and, that, and that includes um, doing inventories whether it be wildlife, you know, understanding what types of wildlife are using the lot at that time, what type of recreation activities are happening on the lot, um, an inventory of the timber, an inventory of the shrubs, um, all of that inventory is conducted and then presented to the landowner with some options. Now ultimately the landowner, the landowner guides those decisions based on their objectives. What a forester does is provide the information and provide guidance for that landowner. Um, and so usually that, that all gets uh, compiled into a forest management plan. Um, and that management plan is ad adaptive. It's, once it's written, doesn't mean that it's written in stone. Um, the landowner can modify that management plan uh, based on market conditions, weather conditions, um, insect conditions. Um, I try to encourage my landowners to reference that management plan often and make notes. Take notes in the management plan and if things need to be modified in that management plan don't be afraid to reach out to your consultant forester. When I was a district forester um, I would meet with landowners and refer them to consulting foresters and I remember the last thing I'd always tell a landowner was um, make sure you like your forester. It makes sense right? because it's supposed to be a long-term relationship. It's not, when a landowner works with a forester, that forester may work for multiple generations on that same land. And, and really, you need to have a good working relationship and you need to get along. So meet with, meet with multiple consultants and work with somebody that you like and that you want to work with well into the future. Thank you, Paul. So if I'm a landowner, sounds like the best thing to do is first contact the Maine Forest Service and talk to Andy and then he can refer me to a district my local district forester who can come out on my land walk it with me maybe do a quick habitat assessment talk about what my goals are for managing that land maybe I don't really know what my goals are so the forester can help me think through that and help prioritize whether it's 
wildlife or timber or aesthetics or recreation. And all yeah. of the above. Or all, all of the above. Yeah. And then after I meet with that district forester, if I decide that I, I want to put together a management plan, then I can go to the list of stewardship foresters, bring a couple out, have them come walk the land with me so I can decide which one I click with. And then, then what happens? Then if I want to move forward with creating that management plan, how do I do that? Okay, uh, good questions. And uh, very often the next step involves signing up for a program of some sort. Uh, at Maine Forest Service, we have a, a, an assistance program that we call the Woodswise Incentives Program. And that can provide some financial assistance for getting a certain kind of forest management plan. Um, more than a bare bones plan, this would be a plan that comprehensively looks at wildlife habitat, forest health, timber value, uh, water quality, and the water features on the land, and, and a host of other things. And um, as again, I mentioned, there'd be some reimbursement for that. So it's what we used to call cost share uh, program. Uh, there is also another uh, organization called the Natural Resources Conservation Service, which is a federal um, branch of the USDA. Uh, it's a federal agency. They have offices around the state, and they can provide an array of financial and technical assistance as well uh, through a program called the Environmental Quality Incentives Program, which can also help defray the cost of forest management plans and beyond that, it can help with the cost of certain practices that have been recommended in the plan. So when you talk about what happens next, Sally, typically the plan is not the end of the story by any means. Um, whether you get it through a program or simply you know, pay your forester to write one for you, um, implementing the recommendations is really key. And if your, your desires uh, have to do with wildlife habitat, creating those gaps making sure that your um, large woody material remains, um, that you don't get too involved in cleaning up the forest. All of these things um, are part of what hopefully follows the plan and the recommendations. And then furthermore, you wanna consider that this is not uh, a one-time deal. Um, it's kinda like uh, get a plan, follow the plan, review the plan, amend the plan, update the plan. And, and continue on and on. And typically you would update that plan at least every 10 years or so? Uh, 10 years is a good interval. Um, most of the programs that I mentioned, Woodswise and, and the environmental, environmental quality uh, plans get written for 10 year periods. That also coincides with a few other programs uh, such as the tree growth tax law. Um, the point about plans is they really should be living documents. And there could be many things that happen within that 10 years that really makes it make sense to revisit. You could have a weather event, uh, insect outbreak, um, something in your own personal life or your family's life that causes you to need to change course. So never really think of it as something that's uh, just uh, set in stone and done. And then, as Paul mentioned, don't be afraid to call back either your consoling forester or sometimes this is another good place to call the district forester um, just for a check-in. So yeah, it's a continuing process. What we really at Maine Forest Service, our, one of our goals is to get woodland owners really engaged with their woods. Um, so this involves working with professionals, it involves the planning, but as much as anything, it just involves getting out there, walking around, enjoying it, learning from it, and um, hopefully passing it on to your family members in the future. Yes, yeah, so there's a real legacy element here not only for your family, but also for the forest. Uh, as we know, trees take a long time to grow. Right now we're in a much older forest than we were in earlier today. And if you look around, you can see there are many more big trees, taller trees. There's more vegetation at all layers of the forest. There's some really nice down woody material here. And, uh, um, and the hummock and hollow floor, which is typical of a forest that hasn't been disturbed for a long time. And those are all features that take a long time to develop. So we're in this for the long haul. And that's why Paul said it's so important to find somebody you like to work with. 
I hope you've enjoyed our little mini series of videos talking about our Forestry for Maine Birds program. We've tried to give you a brief introduction to the program. It's way more fun though if you can actually come out into the woods with us. And so once we're able to offer workshops again, we encourage you to join us in person. And we also encourage you to go to the Maine Audubon website under Forestry for Maine Birds. You can find all kinds of additional resources there. And of course, remember to check in with the Maine Forest Service for help in contacting a district forester or a consulting forester or the Maine Tree, Found, Maine Tree Farm to enter your woodlot into their certification program. Uh, if you have any questions, you can give me a call or email. My name again is Sally Stockwell and that uh, at Maine Audubon, that email is sstockwell at maineaudubon.org and our website is just maineaudubon.org. So please come join us. Thank you. And remember, messy is good, bigger is better, more is better, and you have an important role to play in helping keep this baby bird factory going strong long into the future. Thanks for all you do.